Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys of Magic. This is Hunter, Steven, David, and Shane. Say what up, boys. What's going on? Hey, guys. What's up, nerd boys and girls? Back once again, this time doing another Commander Grades video, the final one for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. We've, we've gone through the monocolored, we've gone through the precon grades, we've gone through all of the Jurassic World grades. If you haven't seen those, check the description. But this one is the big one. It's the multicolored grades. All of those multicolored legendary creatures from Lost Cameras of Ixalan. Going to go through them, talk about them at a potential commander, give them a grade, and then a whole consensus grade at the end. So let's go ahead and get started with this first one. It is Abuelo, Ancestral Echo. It's one, a white, and a blue for a 2-2 legendary creature spirit. It's got flying and ward 2. It has an ability where you can pay one, a white, and a blue. It says exile another target creature or artifact you control. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. What do we think about a blink commander there, David? I love blink commanders. I, I love everything about this card. It's cheap. It's got the ward, too, so it does a fairly decent job of protecting itself. And I love the ability here, too. I mean, it's just like a nice little mana sink for me to reuse all of our ETBs. I'm actually very high on this card. I think this seems like a lot of fun. It does seem like you. a lot of fun. Dude, and it's cheap. And it's cheap. Yes. Yeah, like, that's all I can hear from you. Sorry. Yeah. I know. It is cheap. Three mana for a 2 2. Very good. And that ability is not a tap ability. That's. Awesome. You can abuse it. That's wow. That's what David said. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Hey, it's a spirit I mean, though, guys. We're gonna play spirits, right? It's I mean, I'm kind of confused because like I don't understand how you guys think you could abuse this in, in these colors. There's no way that blue white has ever been able to achieve, you know, tomfoolery of this nature. Never. I think this is a good card, good kind of card, dude. Steven, don't abuse your elders. Uh, that's your grandpa. Abuelo. This is probably like, this is my top three from this set. Really? I'm not going to lie. I actually really enjoy this too because you can build like a retirement home theme deck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Please explain. Well, or, like, you know, don't. I don't know. I don't know. I include this and like every other creature of like, I don't know, 70 plus years old. Okay. Never mind. Interestingly okay. enough, this card is one of the cheapest rares you can open in this set. So. So people maybe don't understand the power. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe not that good in the standard or something like this, but not too bad for EDH, especially what we're talking about. Let's move on to the grades, David. What are you giving Abuelo? I am going to give Abuelo a solid C. Interesting. I'm actually going to go one up and say Abuelo gets a B. Yeah, I, I still think it's in the middle of the road to me, guys. You guys are super high on it, and it's fun, but it's still a C. Yeah, I don't feel that way at all. Uh, I think even if I do go A, it'd still be a B. Uh, but, I'm, but I am going to give this a B with Hunter. I think this is very easy to, as the young kids say, F around and find out. Hmm. Abuelo Ancestral Echo gets the average grade of a B. Next up, Akawali, the Seething Tower. It's one, a black, and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature fungus. And has Descend 4, which means as long as there are four or more permanent cards in your graveyard, Akawali, the Seething Tower, gets plus 2, plus 2, and has Trample. It also has Descend 8, which means as long as there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, Akawali gets an additional plus 2, plus 2, and can't be blocked by more than one creature. Steven, how are we feeling about Akawali? You know, it's very interesting that you bring this over here because I, I was very, like, I didn't care for this card at all. I think it's really good in standard. Um, but for commander, I was like, why would we put this as commander? It's basically a card that kind of pumps itself. And then I was like, well, there was, you know, Yargle Mertani, which was, a, how big was that thing? Like an 18 what? It is an 18-6. It's quite a bit bigger than what this gets. Yeah, it's huge, but it has no abilities. So like, you know, you just kind of play it to be kind of like Voltroni and mess around. And that's kind of the feeling I get here. So I guess if you wanted like Yargle Mertani, but a little bit smaller and easier to cast... This is kind of the way to go. I don't I think that comparison is correct. I what do you mean? Makani just hits face and wins. Sure, <laughs> this but is it costs a the little shit bit more. This has more setup, and it doesn't get as big. I'm going to agree with Hunter on this one. Even with the trample and the additional, like, the blockage restriction on this card, it, ultimately, I think this is still just like a big dumb beater. This, this is going to take three turns to kill uh, without some extra help, and that's assuming you've already put support into this card. Guys, 
Fungus commanders are cool. This is not the fun guy we're looking for. Is this not the fun guy we're looking for? There's a different um, fun guy, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the setup there to descend 4, then descend 8, and essentially when you're descend 8, it just becomes a 7-7 seven, seven that can't be blocked by more than one creature. And has trample. And has trample. That's all it is. I'm not high on this card. Let's move on to the grades. Akawali, for me, is getting a D. I'm going to jump in on the train of disappointment here. This is going to be a D for me as well. I apologize. I'm also a disappointment. I'm on the D train. I'm not as that low, so I'm actually going to put this at about a D. I'm not as that, and then you still go a D, dude. Akawali, the Seething Tower, gets the average grade of a D. Next up, Amelia Benavides Aguirre. It is white and a black for a 2-2 legendary creature, Vampire Scout. It's got ward, pay 3 life. And it says whenever you gain life, it explores. Then destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. Yeah, I think this card is pretty good. It's good in standard. It's currently a powerhouse in standard, yeah. For any uh, Orzhov life gain deck, the ability for it to explore is so good. I mean, as soon as you get to power 20, everything else is dead and you kill someone. Well, is that, is that a meme, though, Hunter? Like, how often are you doing the exactly 20? I mean, just put, you, you just put counters on it. You just put the pants on. Makes it a Voltron commander. Take off things. Put it on the other thing. Put it back on to get 20. Bang. Just keep killing the board over and over and over again. I think it's very simple just to start taking out your opponents one at a time with 20 commander damage. There I are kind of, little cards, too, that you can pair with this, like the Soul Sisters, the Soul Warden, um, all of that, like, I don't know, there's like five or six of those style of cards. And then you have things like Blind Obedience in there as well. So, like, there are things that you can put in that are going to gain one instance a ton of times. So she actually is, she, she's not that difficult to hit 20 in a game of Commander, uh, um, which in and of itself, like, that could be pretty scary because all you need to be able to do is just deal 21 points of combat or yeah, 21 points of combat commander damage in order to kill somebody. The downside here, however, is that she does require a ton of setup and your opponents do get to see that coming. So she does kind of telegraph your plays. And then lastly, the, uh, the word pay three life is really not a, a very real cost in a game of commander in standard. I could see that three life is, is quite a bit, but in a game of commander that three life is just negligible. Yeah. I'm not high on this card whatsoever. I understand that it might be easy to get those instances of like one life, but I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I saw this card. I liked it because it came down cheap. I agree with David Ward pay three life is absolutely nothing in commander, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, okay. It's mediocre. I, I honestly think, I mean, I get that if you can get that engine going with the board wipe, that's great. I kind of just like it that whenever you gain life, you explore. I think that in itself is the strong part to me. I think the it, destroying part is kind of overkill. Yeah, I actually agree with Shane on this one. For it being an Orzhov commander, like the amount of card advantage that this thing accrues is just insane. Yeah, I like that part for sure. Completely agree. Let's move on to the grades. Shane, what are you giving Amelia? I think I'm going to give Amalia a B, dude. Yeah, I'm going to join you there. I'm giving her a B as well. I am in agreement. I think she's a B. I'm actually going to give her a C. I'm not very high on this card. Well, Amalia Benavides Aguirre gets the average grade of a B. Next up, a Nimpical Thousandth Moon. It is one a red and a white for a 1-2 legendary creature human soldier. So whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, put a plus one plus one counter on a Nimpical. Then create X 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on a Nimpical. As the resident Boros player, I would like to say this card is pretty powerful. I've been seeing it do work in standard. Now, I know that's a very small sample size because a EDH is a 100-card format. But with that being said, you just put in anything in the deck that are not gnomes, and this just gets bigger and your board gets wider so fast. Yeah, I was waiting for you to say it. something. The card, just, the card wants you to attack. So if you're all about combat damage, which you are, and many mm. people are, and it, it, yeah, you, you don't care about the gnomes. I think this is like other decks that David's had where it's like, this is a themed deck, but it's only the commander that does the theme. I think this is the only thing that you're going to be seeing 
with gnomes, it's going to be this card making them. And yeah, everything else you, your deck do not, you do not need to attack with this. This just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and just makes more and more gnomes attacking. It it gets, like I said, out of hand so fast. It cares about tokens and 1-1s. One That's crazy. I guess my only concern for this is I feel like you would want to build this as just like a general go go fast aggro deck. And I feel like although those can be really powerful in standard, they're generally not very good in EDH just because people are going to be playing with more tuned removal and they're going to be playing with much like just higher life totals in general. So I'm actually not very high on this card. Even if they are making an army of gnomes, uh, I'm, I'm just seeing this as like, this is one board wipe away from you losing probably too much. I mean, I'm not worried about board wipes with this card. I think that, this is a Boros card, and there's tons of ways to get plus one, plus one counters on Boros decks. So I think this is a really fun card. I think you don't even care about board wipes. Yeah, this this fixes the board quickly by itself, too. This is a That's not home. I was going to say, I agree with David for sure, but then, David, if you think about, you could rebuild your board so quick after a board state, like just putting this creature back on the field and then giving her something that gives her plus one, plus ones. Granted, I keep saying something, something. They get to have a thing that does it, but then she just creates the board again for you. It's kind of crazy. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm still not very high on it. I feel like the other creatures that you would need to help support this are going to be incredibly important. And just like, I don't know. I, I feel like this is going to be a, a hate generator that doesn't actually really have a payoff. I'll tell you what this is going to go into, which is Nayali. Nayali is the one commander that I have that makes all of your tokens have double strike. So. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Pretty good. But let's move on to the grades. I'm still very high on an Impic Hall. I'm giving it a B. I'm more of the middle of the road, man. I'm going to give her a C. I recognize that there is something there. I'm still not high on this. This is just kind of another run-of-the-mill Boros attacky commander for me. I'm going to give this a C. Yeah, this is going to be really crazy, and I'm going to apologize, but I think this card's super solid, and I'm actually going to give this card an A. I really do love this. A Nim Pakal, Thousandth Moon, gives the average grade of a B. Next up, Bartolome del Presidio. It is a white and a black for a 2-1 legendary creature, Vampire Knight. It says, sacrifice another creature artifact. Put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Uh, this is a David card. Two mana David sack man. outlet in your command zone. Yeah. That just gets bigger. That seems very easy to build around, right, Dave? I don't care about the bigger, to be completely honest at all. Carry on feeder is like a cool card. It's a free sacrifice outlet. That's what this card is really good for. Um, And free sacrifice outlets Mm -hmm. tend to be pretty solid. And I don't know, the few that we do have that that can be a commander are pretty pushed. So I don't know because there's not like a whole lot extra to do with this card. It's just going to get big. But uh, I don't know. Free sack is really powerful. Are you saying that Orzov aristocrat strategy is good? I mean, I don't want to necessarily say that because to be completely honest with you, I don't think that this is the best Orzov aristocrats commander. I don't actually know if this even scratches the top five or possibly even top 10. Yeah. The first thing I thought of when I saw this card is like, it does one thing in, in the color that it really wants to do, but this just feels like a much better support piece. Like, I don't know if you want this at the helm. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I agree with you there. So here's my thing. I think having a sec outlet in your command zone is nuts. I think having that option, especially in these in this color format, is great. I, I, but at the end of the day, I think it's kind of weird because you have ways to tutor those sack outlets or something even better. So is there a point to do that when you can? I, I, I just I don't know, man. This is this is weirding me. I don't. Uh, it's weirding me out, man. It's, it's like, weirding me out, man. This is a color combination that already has a lot of really good sacrifice outlets. Your commander in this case is literally just going to do the exact same thing. And given that it's good, but I agree with Steven, like, is this actually adding to the deck or is it just creating more consistency on the sack? Well, let's move on to the grades, Dave. What are you giving Bartolome? I'm going to give this card a B. I'm going to give this card a C. I think this is, uh, I think it probably reads better than it is. You know, I'm only going to give it a C as well, because I think we've all said it. There are better options to do the aristocrat strategy in these colors. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump in with you there, guys. I'm, I'm going to give this a C as well. I think we're all in agreement. This is a good support card. Maybe not the best commander, but I'm still going to give it a C. 
Bartolome del Presidio gets the average grade of a C. Next up, Caparacti Sunborn. It is two, a red and a white for a 4-4 legendary creature human soldier. It says whenever it attacks, you may tap two untapped artifacts and or creatures you control. If you do, discover three. Is this a powerful enough effect to be a helm of a deck, Shane? I don't think so. I, I, didn't, I didn't know if you were going to call me or not, but I already had my answer locked in, and I don't think so. Because the discover mechanic, we're all, oh, I think we're all in agreement that it's, in my, in my opinion, at least a better uh, cascade with the ability to be able to just put it in your hand if, or not. But I feel like this is just going to get you, unless you build your deck to only hit something small like that, which I'm sure Dave is going to bring up, and like be more consistent and grabbing something little like that. I don't know if Discover 3 is enough for me. No, this, this card is not good. It does nothing on its own. It requires that you build a board state around it. And the payoff, like, it can be cute. I don't know. I'm imagining, like, a Boros prison or staxi style deck where you're just going to continue to like to discover into your pieces but i'm not high on this card i just i really enjoy this card because especially with this set coming out i feel like there's tons of ways to take advantage of creating artifacts uh and creatures especially in this color screen uh do i think discover three is going to be good enough that's where i kind of have that question but i think you know did anybody talk about the fact that you can build around it yet <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm going to stop you right there and say Discover 3 is not good enough. David's already said that. As the Just because David the, says something does not mean it's correct. Yeah. I agree as, with you all the time. I mean, as the person that ran the dino deck, discovering into a number that isn't locked in is so much better. Discovering 3, I feel like unless you're running your entire deck on 3 mana or less, you're no, no. rarely going to hit that. All the time, that's, and that's, that's what all I it's gonna hit. Yeah, you don't. You don't need like you can just do this stupid thing where you add like three crucial pieces that will consistently get gra- grabbed by it. But other than that, it wouldn't do mana anything. rocks. Sure, I mean or other other ways. That's that's kind of why I alluded to like the the stacks or the prison style because like most of those pieces do cost three or less. So this is a way for you to consistently get them in play, assuming that you can actually get them consistently in play. This is also a four mana commander, so he's a little bit clunky and that like. I feel like that strategy, you probably need to be running something lower to the ground so that you can be a little bit faster to set yourself up. Um, and even whenever this thing does actually like get into play, it may not actually even do its thing. You, you still have to have added support for it. Does that help, Steven? I mean, yes and no, because I, I still think that if you build around Discover 3, I mean, some of my favorite decks to play are low to the ground. I, I, I don't, I, again... I, I, I do think this is good and bad. Do I think it's going to be great? Absolutely not. Do I think it's going to be terrible? Again, absolutely not. Let's move on to the grades. Steven, you seem to be the highest. What are you giving this? I don't think I sounded terribly high, but I, I mean, I think this is going to be middle of the ground, middle of the road, middle of the ground road. This is going to be a C for me. I'm giving this a D. I don't think it's that powerful. Same. I'm on the D road. Ground. And that makes three of us for the D. Caparocti Sunborn gets the average grade of a D. Next up, Captain Storm Cosmium Raider. It's a blue and a red for a 2-2 legendary creature human pirate. It says whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target pirate you control. Captain Storm is back, David. What do we think? I actually like this card a lot. Uh, pirates are pretty good whenever it comes to making treasures. And there's a lot of ways that you could be able to trigger this thing. It doesn't actually have to put the plus one, plus one just on one of your creature, or just like on your commander. So you can spread the love a little bit. Um, I don't know. This this card just seems like super fun to me. I feel like this card is more of a support piece, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm not super high on it. Like, I've seen it do work, but it was not at the helm of the deck. I'm, and I believe you, David. I know you can make it go off with uh, creating treasure, creating anything, and then putting one ones on it. But like, is that enough for two Link. mana? Yeah, dude, play Dockside Prophet. That's... Okay, I'll play it once. Play it again. Wow. <laughs> play it once. Play it again. You don't have Admiral Brass at the helm, dude. Steven, I'm not I terribly. I mean, I'm not high on this card. I'm kind of with you, Shane. I mean, is there a fun way to build it? I'm sure there is. I just, I don't, I don't know. When I think of is it and two mana cost commanders, I think like Spell Slinger. And I don't really see it like this. I think this card's good enough. 
two mana, two two, gets huge very quickly with all the treasure production. Not only just treasure production, blue is a fantastic color for just artifacts in general. It's I think it's card to get nuts quickly. Let's move on to the grades. Captain Storm for me, I think it's as high as a B. And I'm gonna go all the way up to a C. Yeah, I'm more of middle of the road, dude. See, definitely joining you guys with a C. Captain Storm, Cosmium Raider, the average grade of a C. Moving on to Hwatli, Poet of Unity. It's two and a green for a two, three legendary creature, human warrior bard. It says, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Also has another ability you could pay three, a red or white, and a red or white. Exile Watley, then return her to the battlefield, transformed under her owner's control. Activate only as a sorcery. When it is transformed, it turns into Roar of the Fifth People, which is a saga enchantment. It's got its first lore counter that says, create two 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature tokens. The second lore counter says, Roar of the Fifth People, Gains creatures you control have tap at a red, green, or white. The third lore counter says search your library for a dinosaur card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And the fourth and final lore counter says dinosaurs you control gain double strike and trample until end of turn. A lot going on with Wadley. I'm the dinosaur guy, and I don't like this card at all. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with Hunter. I completely agree with Hunter as well. This is uh, three mana for a 2-3 that goes and gets you a land that goes in your hand. I assume you're playing this on curve, which means you've already played your land for turn. So you get to keep that land, and then you just wait until you got five mana, and then you can transform this, and then hopefully someone doesn't kill this artifact after its first lore counter. And then uh, the other thing that I wish it did that the other flip commanders we've seen recently from the other sets, why doesn't it transform back? I don't know. It just <laughs> sacrifices itself. And yet you have to cast it again. Exactly. It wants you to cast it again. Get the land again. That's an ETB. It should flip. You're right. This card's not good. Steven, tell me why. It's not good. Thank I'm you. I'm telling All you right. why. Can I tell you guys why it actually is just god awful, though, now, now that we're done? I yes. Feel like... Hit me. Okay, here we go. The backside, right? Its name. You can't say it without having a lisp and then sounding like you're trying to say fish. That's actually just you. Roar of the fifth people. Yeah, fish. But you're saying fifth because you have a lisp. <laughs> the fish people. The fifth people. Just let me cook, Dave. We're ready to go to grades. <laughs> we are. Moving on to the grades for Watley. I hate it. It's a D. I hate it too. It's a D. Actually, it should be an F. It's an F. Wow, Shane getting aggressive over there. I'm joining him. <laughs> That's really crazy because usually Shane's all about the it does something, so it's a D. And this card technically does two things because it's two cards. So what is it, Steven? It's a D. Oh. <laughs> Watley, Poet of Unity. It's the average grade of a D. Moving on to It's Quint, Firstborn of Gishath. It's a red and a green for a 2-3 legendary creature dinosaur. It's got haste. It says when it enters the battlefield, you may pay two. When you do, Target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to the power to another target creature. It's Quint is a dinosaur that's not good at the helm. Yeah, for real. Because it only triggers it, once, right? It only triggers once. It's when you when it enters, you may pay two, which means you can't cast this for the two when you really want to do it because it has haste. So you like want to get it out there swinging, but you also want to stand back and wait until you have that two extra to deal damage. I don't well, think I'd this card is very good. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to play it on curve anyways, because like you want something already big on the battlefield, right? Yep. It's not a good card. Card's not good. At yeah, the card's helm. Not good. At the helm, no. I mean why it's it, good now, Dave. This card I feel like is a little deceptive. It is small, but obviously this thing is not gonna drop on turn two. It's gonna drop a little bit later. I don't know. This is a card that like I want to like. I wanna say that it's cool. You can abuse it with things like Conjurer's Closet. Um I just don't actually think there's a whole lot going on here. I would agree. Let's move on to the grades. It's with, as much as I like you being the firstborn of my favorite dinosaur, Gishath, you get a D. I'm going to continue on with the hardball train. This card gets an F. Yeah, I think this card gets an F for me too, dude. 
Yeah, as a commander, this is definitely an F. It's Quinthkiss, the average grade of an F. Moving on to a guy from the previous set, making his way into this one. It's Kellen, Daring Traveler. It is an adventure card. Its adventure portion is called Journey On. It's one green mana for a sorcery that says create X map tokens, where X is one plus the number of opponents who control an artifact. Kellen, Daring Traveler, is one and a white for a 2-3 legendary creature, Human Fairy Scout. That says whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card with mana value 3 or less, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Is that powerful, David? I mean, it's very low to the ground, and it has card advantage. I don't think this card is great, but I also don't think it's actually awful. Yeah. Are you casting it for your adventure? I mean... Uh... I, I think you are, because it's cheaper, and you get to cast... It as a creature if you're casting its adventure for two always, right? You, you also just like turn one, you can technically cast this adventure and guarantee you'll get at least one map. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Or, you know, if you're late, if you're like the last person in rotation and two other friends of yours that you love so much dropped a soul ring, that's good. I mean, I guess, yes, but if two of your friends are dropping soul rings on turn one, I don't know if I necessarily want to follow it up with this, even if that is the added benefit. I don't think we like this card, Hunter. Not a huge fan of it, but it does kind of break the game a little bit. There is a way to kind of like break it with the map tokens, and there's a way to go like infinite with it, but then again, what are you going to do with infinite map tokens? You're going to make a big-ass map. All right, well, let's move on to the grades then. What are you giving it there, David? I'm going to give it... This is weird. I'm going to say I'm going to give it a C just because I'm not entirely sure how I should feel. You know, David, I agree with you. I don't know how to feel either. It's a C for me, too. I think we all don't know how to feel here. I think that turn one play getting a map is pretty good, and then he can do something, so I'm going to give it a C. Yeah, I mean, I know how to feel. There's a way to break it, so it's definitely a C. Okay. Helen, Daring Traveler. It's the average grade of a C. Moving on to Kutzil. Malamut Exemplar. It's one, a green, and a white for a 3-3 legendary creature cat warrior. It says your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. And whenever one or more creatures you control, each with power greater than its base power, deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Seems good. I'm yeah. A big, big fan of this card. I feel like this card is fantastic. Your opponents can't do anything to you on your turns. You can do whatever you want. Count me in. Yeah, I think for that text on this alone, that's really powerful. It's a grand abolisher in your command zone, which is really powerful just on that first ability. Um, the added portion there, this could be a card draw engine for you. So I, I'm pretty high on this card. I like this a lot. We're going to get to a card in a bit that I threw this card into that. So you'll see. Okay. But I mean, yeah, I guess I'm having the same opinion as everyone else that the top text is really strong, so as long as you can abuse that bottom text, it seems like the card will be good. One counter, you abuse that bottom text. Moving on to the grades. Kutsu for me, I think that top text, like David said, very important. I think it gets a B. I'm going to ride with a B here as well. Wait, are we all going to do it, Stephen? Uh, I'm going to give this a B as well, yes. I, I will do it. Okay, then I'm going to do it too. It's a B. Kutsu, Malamet, Exemplar. Is she average grade of a B? Next up, Nikancel, current conductor. It is a green and a blue for a 2-3 legendary creature, Merfolk Scout. It says whenever a creature you control explores a land card, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature you control explores a non-land card, put a plus one plus one counter on Nikancel, current conductor. Shane, Merfolk's exploring... Oh boy, this card is bonkers in Hackball, but I don't think it's a it's bonkers out of Hackball. Like it, it wants the other cards in your deck to be doing the thing, but in Hackball, like he's the one doing all this for you. So I think this card is much better at support, but I could be wrong. You tell me you're not going to build around the card. I'm just telling you that I think it's much easier to explore when the commander says all your creatures explore. Is this card in the deck? Yes. Never saw it once. That would have been so cool. Yeah, it's there's actually a combo too that goes like 
crazy, but I never got to see it. This is just an advantage engine. This card is just a generally good advantage engine. Um, my issue with it being is that like it doesn't trigger on its own, and it is working with a mechanic that is relatively small. Like there hasn't been a whole lot of like explorer cards. Um, fortunately, a lot of them are merfolk, so you could build around this and and get those synergies, and you have that that color. I'm gonna say it. I think this card is just. I'll be the final judgment for you, Dave. Go play hackball. This card's great. I I get that this card's good. Just play hackball and play with this card in hackball. Yeah, we're beating a dead horse at this point. I think we're all in agreements. This is much better as a support piece in a card that does the exploring on its own. Yes, Steven, you can build around this, put a bunch of explore cards around it, but for, yeah, it's still good at two mana, though. Let's move on to the grades. Shane, what are you giving the cancel? I think I'm going to give it a C. It still does the thing like David said. It just might not do it great. I agree. This is a C from me, too. Hey, if you build around it, it's a C. Yeah, I, I will agree. It's a C. The cancel current conductor gets the average grade of a C. Moving on to a familiar face, it's Sahili, the sun's brilliance. It's a blue and a red for a 2-2 legendary creature human artificer. It has an ability of a blue and a red. Tap it. Create a token that's a copy of another target creature or artifact you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. That's a powerful effect, especially when it doesn't say that stupid sentence we all hate that says, activate only as a sorcery. You can activate it on your opponent's turns. That's true, but you do have to tap this, and you have to pay for it. And you gotta kill it. I still think it's very powerful. Yeah, I feel like free copies of things are never bad. Get those ETBs flowing. True. Yeah, there's a lot that you can do with this card. I, I do love being able to copy things. I just feel like this is a card that... I don't know. Your opponents are going to see this thing coming because you do have to be able to tap it and you do have to be able to pay for it. I guess on the bright side, though, this is a, it is only two mana initially to get into play, so it is very cheap. Yeah. yeah. Take advantage of something like Key 9 Navigator. Copy that. Destroy that copy. Take another turn. Keep doing that. Over and over and over. I mean, I definitely like where you're coming from and what you're thinking. It is a little tough just because Key 9 Navigator does require... A decent chunk of mana so you would need six but i mean you know they're the you can make a shit ton of treasures so i mean i, I yeah i think out of all the two mana commanders we've seen so far today i might be the highest on this one well just wait buddy oh there's more uh, right. let's move on to the grades what are we giving it shane i think i'm gonna give sahelia b um i'm gonna go a little bit lower than that i'm actually gonna go with the C. I still like the card i am just a little hesitant on it I'm giving Sahili the Sun's Brilliance a B for brilliance. Hunter, you uh, you kind of brought me up, man. I think I'm actually going to give this a B. Yeah, there we go. Sahili the Sun's Brilliance gets the average grade of a B. Next up, Sovereign Okanek Ahu. It is two, a green, and a white for a 3-4 legendary creature, Cat Noble. It's got Ward 2 and says whenever it attacks for each creature you control with power greater than its creature's base power, put a number of plus one plus one counters on that creature equal to the difference. Yes. Talk about That's it, Hunter. Tell me. Kitty go smash. Kitty go feisty, smash. The feisty kitty. And let me tell you, I'm here for it as the resident plus one plus one counter player. This gets out of hand so quickly. The only downside is that this card has to attack. That is a downside. That is a downside. But let me tell you, when you get the engine going and you have a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on this, and this is going and this hasn't been dealt with, War 2's nice, has a little bit of protection there. Put in other cards that protect this. And then you got an engine that just keeps doubling the amount of counters you have on your creatures. Yeah, I think this would be a a pretty solid uh, card in the uh, what is it? Katsul, Katsul, the yeah, Katsul, the card that we talked about earlier. Exact opposite, David. Katsul goes into this. Ooh, I disagree. I think Katsul is better than this. Uh, making making your big things get bigger is cool. It's cute. It helps you close out the game. But that's not necessarily what I want my commander to do. I want my commander to generate more value and. Um, don't get me wrong, this card is, is still solid as like a way to push through and win the game, but I'm actually going to disagree with you here. I think this is better as support. I will say, it does a thing that's pretty unique, meaning that it, I had to have this card read to me 
like five times before I understand what it did. So that's cool. Oh, yeah. It's got words on it, Shane. Yeah. It, it It's not very straightforward if your name is Shane. I think this card is fantastic, and everything Hunter has said about it to me has made me love it even more. Moving on to the great Sovereign Okanek Ahu from me. I love this. It's a B. Hunter, you talked sweet nothings in my ear, and I'm with you on a B. Uh, I think the card is pretty solid. I'm going to give this a C. I think I'm going to give this the average grade of a B. <laughs> Sovereign Okanek Ahu gets the average grade of a B. Moving on to another card it is Tetsin, Gnome Champion. It is a blue, a red, and a white for a 2-2 legendary artifact creature gnome. It says whenever it or another double-faced artifact enters the battlefield under your control, mill three cards. You may put an artifact card from among them into your hand. You can also craft this with six artifacts for a cost of four. When you craft it, it turns into the Golden Gear Colossus which is a 6-6 six, six. legendary artifact creature gnome. Got Vigilance and Trample. It says whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, transform up to one other target double-faced artifact you control. Create two 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens. Cute. This just screams Steven. He might not like it, but in my head, he loves it. Yeah, it's janky, weird. This is 100% a Steven card. This is 100% a me card. <laughs> <laughs> it also mills. It mills for Steven. Like it, it takes all your boxes, dude. It's it is kind of wonky because obviously you need a bunch of double face artifact cards. But I mean, listen, it's kind of funky. And a lot of good double face artifact cards came out of this set that do some pretty broken things that might otherwise need to be crafted. But I feel like this card would just whip it for you. Yeah, it's yeah. just kind of tough because. Also, you need to craft with six artifacts and pay four, and that's just really aggressive. I'm going to be the guy that waits for all that to happen and then kills this card. Yeah. No, yeah, you're dumping a lot of resources into this and just, and you're hoping. I, hey, just a reminder, too, you can craft from the graveyard, so it doesn't have to be from your battlefield, so that's just one little thing that's cool, but... Sure, no, but with that trigger on the stack, this dies, yeah. you're going to yeah, become yeah, pissed. Yeah. Plus, 100%. you're only getting a Vigilance Trample 6-6 that creates two gnome artifact creature tokens. Yeah, that one that also flips your other thing. Yeah. I mean, it does a lot if you have a thing going, but like on an empty board state, it does nothing. But I guess a lot of our, a lot of commanders would do nothing. Whatever. This is for the memes, boys. It's, it's for the memes, I agree. Yeah, it is for the memes. And because of that, I'm not super high here. Let's move on to the grades for Tetson, then. What are we giving it, memer? It's an A. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what a meme, dude. Oh, what a meme, dude. This is a... Uh, I'm actually going to give this a D. I am in wow. complete agreement. I'm giving this a D, too. That makes three of us. I'm shocked, Steven. I thought you were going to get a memester grade, but I agree. It's a D. I got to give the people at home the truth. <laughs> It'll still probably be fun, so I'm going to build this. Let me tell you. Tetsin, Gnome Champion, gets the average grade of a D. Moving on to maybe Steven's favorite card? The Ancient One. It is blue and a black for an 8-8. Legendary Creature Spirit God. It has Descend 8. That says the Ancient One can't attack or block unless there are 8 or more permanent cards in your graveyard. It has another ability you can pay 2, a blue and a black. Draw a card, then discard a card. When you discarded a card this way, target player mills cards equal to the mana value. Steven. This is you written all over it, and I want to see you build it. Yeah, I kind of wanted to build this too, and I was really high on this card, and then I kept reading it, and I kept reading it, and I kept reading it, and every time I read it, I ran into one issue. What's that? David, I think you can tell me what my one issue with this card is. I don't know if I can. I'm, I'm trying to find it. I'm not sure if I can. I'll tell you, Steven. What? It's a two-mana 8-8, eight, eight, and you hate that. No, it says target player. <laughs> Oh, and not every opponent? Yes. That is the unfortunate thing, but even with that being said, I think this could still be a really fun card. You just put in the most ridiculous shit that costs so much, and you're going to hurt somebody. And building this as reanimator is going to be really fun, too. So Dude, this is a, a really fun card, and I, I am very excited to build this. It's nuts, actually. It's two mana. It comes down cheap. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. 
Doesn't even do attacker block. Who cares? At this point, it's just an enchantment that has an ability that lets you draw a discard, makes you mill something. Discard Eldrazi, reanimate the Eldrazi. Just mill people for 12. That's fantastic. Not uh, not an enchantment, but I see where you're going with it. I know it's not an actual enchantment, but at that point, can't attack or block. Who cares? It's just sitting there. I don't know, man. I think this card, like what Hunter just alluded to, like you're not going to want to target an opponent to mill. You're going to target yourself so that you have good reanimation targets. And I think that that ability is going to be something that like turn four, whenever you can sink the mana into that ability is when this thing can attack. And that is really scary that you're going to have an 8-8 that's either going to be able to protect you or going to be start swinging in at your opponents relatively early, and it's also fueling your deck. I think the problem here is that it's going to run into every problem that any mill deck in Commander runs, is that when you're just targeting one person at a time, that's slow as shit, dude. You want those abilities that target everyone, which makes mill more viable, but unless you're doing what David's doing or saying, right? Like, okay, you're going to be targeting yourself, but... Are you I not mean, trying to win with the um, mill damage here, right? Or? Absolutely not. I, that's way too slow. I want to target myself, speed through my deck, and like what Hunter said, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start like chewing through some of the big heavy hitters. Start milling massive like chunks of my own library. That way, I can like just kind of filter through and use that as a as a card advantage engine. I mean, yeah. what I am gonna say is, and I completely agree with you guys. As somebody who just built a Grixis Reanimator deck, I think one of the biggest issues I had was I milled everything I needed to reanimate certain things or put certain <laughs> things in the graveyard that I wanted every True. single game. Now, granted, you know, there are tons of ways to get those cards in and then reanimate them, but I just feel like it, it's such a... You have to hit really good, you know what I mean? Every single time. I just feel like the first time I'm doing this, if I mill eight, I'm going to mill every single reanimator card right off the rip. Yeah, you are. That's my biggest fear. You can't have fear. When you're playing with the spirit god. Kind of know in your heart, dude. Let's move on to the grades, Steven. What do you give the ancient one? It's an A. I'm not so going that high. I do think it's a B, though. Oh, God. I will give this card a B as well. Fine. I guess we're giving it Bs. The ancient one gets the average grade of a B. Next up, the Myco Tyrant. It is one, a black and a green for a star, star, legendary creature, elder, fungus. It's got trample. It says its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi and or saplings. So at the beginning of your end step, create X11 black fungus creature tokens with this creature can't block, For X is the number of times you descended this turn. Jane, here's your fun guy. This is my fun guy. This, is, this guy is a fun guy. Let me tell you right now. Uh, I think this guy's awesome. I think uh, if I've ever wanted to build a dredge deck, Dredge has never been broken in the history of Magic, and I don't think it'll be broken here. But for that whole Descend, uh, I think I was alluding to Dredge being very good in this. Descend is fantastic, and this will just make your board huge out of nowhere. Uh, you're going to deal with it, and then you're just going to get huge out of nowhere again. I think people are going to have a hard time dealing with this card. I agree. There's a lot of ways for you to be able to already make a large quantity of Sapperling tokens, too. So. I think that there's already like a fairly decent package that you can put together with this. And then you can also, like what Shane had alluded to, build in that self sac or that self mill package of um being able to dredge or just like playing just general good sacrifice cards that you can add in here too. I, I think this card is actually pretty solid. Yeah, this card's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Steven. I appreciate it. Come on, Steven. I'm gonna have input from you. Yeah, I mean, Dredge is a thing, especially in Golgari. I mean, you can't really go wrong. This is three mana, comes down super early, and God, like a life to the loam just fucking makes this thing nuts. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything for that matter would, but yeah. And then yeah. you can use all your little things that you make to either sacrifice or... And you can do so many things with them. It's crazy, dude. Like you, can you said. Tell me, can you tell me three things? You could sacrifice them. You could sacrifice them. You could sacrifice them. You could attack with them. You could potentially use them for mana if you want. There's cards See? in green that you can like have your creatures tap for mana. See? Um, just no, like I, I, I know. Board. I just yeah. wanted. I wanted. <laughs> I wanted him to say it. Well, I did say it to, to, to David. Yeah. yeah, we're one brain now. The micro tyrant. Let's, let's move on to the grades for the micro tyrant. Shane, you love this card. What are we giving it? 
I really do, man. I might get hate for it, but I'm going to give it an A. I'm in love with this card, too. I'm not in love with it as much as you are. It is a fun guy, but it's Thank a you. Yeah, I think this card is really cool, and I think that there's ways that you can build this where it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I do think that this is a C, however. I think I'm going to give this card a good old B. I think this is a good B card. The Myco Tyrant gets the average grade of a B. Next up is Ukbenbach, the Great Mistake. It is three of blue and a black for a 6-4 legendary creature's skeleton horror. It's got Vigilance and Menace, and it's got Descend 8. You can pay four of blue and a black. Return Ukbenbach, the Great Mistake, from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. Activate only if there are three or more permanent cards in your graveyard and only as a sorcery. Ways to get around Commander Tax for the first time. Seems good. Uh, but then I'm gonna... it's just a 6-4 with Vigilance Menace. Yeah, this this is like this is supposed to be a big dumb beater, but it's not really all that big. Yeah. This yeah, this card is not good. I it's a great it's mistake. Yeah, I think playing this card would be a great mistake, dude. <laughs> Ukbin back. That's all I got. Yep, I'm I'm tapped on this. This card is not good. I don't think this card is playable. Yeah, I'm not that high on this card. Like you said, it's it's a f- six mana. Well, five mana to start, six mana when it dies, and I don't, I don't know. It's, it's really wonky. Not that big, not that big on it. Five mana, six four with vigilance and menace. That is all it is, and that's all it's going to be. I don't think it's very good. We're all thinking it's a great mistake. Let's move on to the grades. Ukbinbach for me is getting an F. It's getting an F for me. Same. Ultron Demir. Let's do it. Oh my god. Is that a grade or? It's an F. Uk Benbach, the great mistake, gets the average grade of an F. Next up, Vito, fanatic of Aklazots. It's two, oh, white and a black for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature, vampire, demon. Got flying and says whenever you sacrifice another permanent, you gain two life. If this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. If it's the second time, each opponent loses two life. If it's the third time. Create a 4-3 white and black vampire demon creature token with flying. Whoa, Dave. Sacrifice vampires. Yeah. Um, If you couldn't get it just by that, I don't like this card. I look at it like this is... It wants to do the drainy thing, and that's fantastic because Orsov has, like, I don't know, 100 different routes that you could possibly take for that. Uh, I don't think this, this drains particularly well. And that you have to be able to kind of reliably be able to sacrifice two things per turn. Um, and it's specifically like sacrificing. So not just like you can't just have some of something like die incidentally and be able to get additional value off this. Um, and then, yeah, sure. It's cute. It does have the third mode there where you can make a, a, a vampire. I don't care about that at all. Um, I'm actually I'm, I'm very low on this card. I, I think this is overcosted and overcomplicated. I don't think sacrificing three things is that complicated. Bing, bing, bing. I'm not talking about sacrificing things being complicated. I'm I'm saying, like, you have to reliably be able to make this sacrifice three things per turn in order for this to be okay. Hey. Yeah. Let's put in Smothering Tithe. Sacrifice some treasures. I don't yeah. Know. I, I just look at it like, this one's probably playing the same lane that, like, LS Ilkor does, and LS Ilkor doesn't care how many times you trigger it so you can use it more it costs half as much as this card and is more exploitable it's just like and and they're kind of doing the exact same thing in that drain aspect yeah ellis doesn't make the the four three but i don't i really don't care about the four three at all yeah i think this card's a lot like vran um meaning whenever that card said whenever one or more creatures control die each opponent loses two life you gain two life but this does it separately and you have to destroy two things or sacrifice two things so weird i don't know about it i don't know about it yeah i don't think it's great but i don't like i think if you're just trying to play a lower powered commander it might be okay but yeah no i think there are a lot better options out there for you let's move on to the grades this is the final veto because he died in the story spoiler alert what are you giving it david i'm gonna give this a very generous d i'm almost tempted to say f here I, too, am going to give this a D. Yeah, I'll give it a D with you guys. Um, uh, yeah, I'll give it a D. 
Vito, fanatic of Aquazots, gets the average grade of a D. Moving on to Xavier Sal, infested captain. It's a black, a green, and a blue for a 3-3 legendary creature, human fungus pirate. You can tap it, remove a counter from another permanent you control, populate. Activate only as a sorcery. In case you forgot what populate means, it means create a token that's a copy of a creature token you control. Also has another ability we can tap it, sacrifice on another creature, proliferate. Activate only as a sorcery. Populate, proliferate. Can only do one at a time, unless you have a way to untap this. Still seems pretty fun though, dude. If there was a way to deal with this and the finality counters that Demon was playing with on his pirates, that'd be pretty fun. Unfortunately, it's different colors, because that would have been a perfect include. Oh, yeah, no, it would have been Oh, yeah, strong. buddy. You better believe that if it was the same colors, that was going to be an instant Believe include. it. But I'm saying, you could probably build something similar like that, where you're caring about maybe getting some negative counters and then removing those. Populate. Populate. The only thing about populate, though, is you have to have a token, a token. on the yep. field for yep. it to populate. So. Crazy. If only you could build around it. Isn't that cool? You could. Shane. Yes. I gotta do it. Uh, uh, you're gonna talk shit? Okay, here we go. No, here we go. Is this the fun guy you're looking for? No, dude. I already saw my fun guy. <laughs> this is the second fun guy. There's a party going on now. All right. I actually really like this card. I think it's pretty solid. It's low to the ground. It's got really fun abilities. I don't know if this card is good or broken or, or even playable. But what I do think is that this is just genuinely fun. Like, this is a commander that I would love to be able to build. It's just kind of like a jank. And and play with it and have a good time. You know, you, it's funny that you say that it's fun, because that's how I feel about this card, too. I feel like this card was made about five, six years ago. Back when, like, this would be a helm of a deck that isn't too powerful, but EDH was still starting to get its legs. I think, uh, I think this would have been that. I think it is fun. Reminds me of the old times. Well, let's move on to the grades. Shane, this is another fun guy. What do you give it, Xavier Cell? This fun guy isn't as fun as my other fun guys. I'm going to give him a C. Yeah, I think he's fun. He's a C. I am in agreement. This is a C. I think he's a really fun guy, so I think I might actually put him at a B. Ooh. Wow, Xavier Cell, infested captain, gets the average grade of a C. Final card we're talking about today is Zoyoa Lava Tongue. It is black and red for a 2 2 legendary creature, Goblin Warlock. It's got Death Touch and it says at the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Zoyoa Lava Tongue deals 3 damage to each opponent who didn't. David, this is our only Rakdos multicolored card from the set. That is a legendary. How do we feel about it? I mean, this card's an A. What can I say? It has, Stupid. Break, breaking this card down, number one, it has the coolest name. Number two, I don't know what's happening in the artwork, but I'm here for every single part of it. I love it so much. Like, that is the, just the happiest little goblin thing. He's just, I don't know what he's doing, but I love this card. It's, it's super cheap. It's got a great ability on it with Death Touch. It's got another ability on it that if you jump through a ton of hoops, you'll be able to deal three damage to your opponent. Um... I really want to like this card. <laughs> but David, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not a good card, bud. It's your, I know you're the Rakdos guys, why I picked on you first. This guy's just not good. I don't, I don't like him. Yeah, he's not. He's triggering once per turn cycle and maybe deals three damage. Yeah, your opponent can say, you know, I'm just going to sacrifice my little 1-1 one, one token. I think this card... You should have a group with all... Okay, have a game night with all your friends. Say, guys, we're going to play commanders that are just silly. And then this would be a great commander. And that's my thoughts. This is not a great commander. Stop that. No, I, you didn't hear my... You didn't hear my I thing? heard your speech. I heard your speech. Okay, Let's go okay. play bad cards. No, thanks. <laughs> I mean, to his credit, though, you can build some fun little shenanigans with this. Like, just the name alone. I don't know. Throw every creature card that starts with a Z inside this deck. And just what are we talking about things. now? I don't he's, know, he's dude. Making the deck even worse. I like this card. I is, think this card is great. I don't like. You, you build this as Rakdos, just hurt people. You know what I mean? 
It ain't good. Let's move on to the grades. Zoyoa is getting an F from me. <sighs> That's pretty harsh, man, but I I think I might agree with you. Yeah, I'm going to give this little guy an F. I'm going to give this little guy a B. I think this is actually pretty fun. You can't be serious. Whatever, just give it to him. Zoyoa Lavatan gets the average grade of a D. That is going to do it for us today. If you guys like that video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Comment down below letting us know if you agree with our grades. Maybe we missed one. In the description, you will find links to our Instagram, our Twitter, and our TikTok. That is at Guys Magic for each one. Also, on the screen right now, that's a big thank you to everyone currently subscribed to our Patreon account. If you want to join the crew, check the description. Also, a link to our Patreon. Big thank you to those that are on the screen. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Later. Later. Bye-bye.